Hello, welcome back to this episode. It's another episode in the series about the Cloud Resume Challenge, and today we'll be talking about infrastructure as code. I mentioned it in the last video, but now we're actually circling back and we're gonna talk about it in this video about what infrastructure as code is and why it's important. So, infrastructure as code itself is gonna be important for when it comes to learning about cloud, but it's also vitally important when it comes to getting a job within the cloud industry. And so today we're just gonna talk about that a little bit, and at the end of today's video, I'll give you some recommendations on infrastructure as code and some things that I would recommend that you do. Infrastructure as code is basically having your cloud configuration or your infrastructure defined in source control, something like GitHub, for instance. So what that means is if you have a configuration in GitHub, that's going to be the same as your cloud account. Let's say that, for instance, you have one server defined in your code, then that's going to mean one server is in AWS or in your cloud account. Now, if you change that configuration, maybe let's say you add a server. Now you have two servers. You have two servers in code and two servers in your cloud account. So that's all infrastructure as code is. When I first started learning about it, I feel like I put this on a pedestal and sort of made it out to be more than it actually is. And it's not as complicated as maybe it might seem at first. So what are some of the benefits of this? So when it when you're in a larger corporation or a big company, uh, some of the benefits of infrastructure as code become more apparent. So what you've got is things like collaboration, which is if you're working with a big team, it makes it more easy to see. Other people can see what your actual infrastructure configuration is. They can raise pull requests against your infrastructure. You can talk about that and you can generally just collaborate on a much broader scale, which maybe isn't apparent necessarily right now as you're working through things on your own, but obviously in a company setting, hopefully you can see how that might be important. Something else as well is something like disaster recovery. If you define your infrastructure as code, then if you have a situation where you need to recreate that, if, for instance, in a disaster, you can easily then just rerun your configurations and create your infrastructure all over again, which obviously is a, is a massive benefit. And one of the other things as well, that lots of different benefits for infrastructure as code, but another one as well is history of changes. So when you've got things defined in code, you can see who changed what, when they changed it, what changes they made, why they made those changes, and all of that information is stored inside your source control, which you wouldn't get if you didn't follow infrastructure as code patterns. So yeah, one of the things I always think to understand infrastructure as code is to actually understand the opposite of it, which is manual configuration. Now, if you've watched any tutorials, if you've watched uh, or if you've tried to been training for a cloud certification, for instance, you'll see in the tutorials very common almost every time that they're going to be showing you how to use a service by actually clicking through the interface. And this sort of process can be quite useful if you are, you know, just getting used to a service or just playing around. But what you find over time is it actually makes sense to then transfer that into infrastructure as code. So if you're playing around with the service, what I would highly recommend you do is when you've played around with that manually, delete everything you've created, and then shift all of that into infrastructure as code because it's a whole different process applying the actual code around that rather than just clicking around an interface. There's probably a lot more we could talk about on that topic, but I won't go into that because it's a little bit of a rabbit hole. But one thing I did also want to mention as well is if you're interested in the whole idea about um, manual configuration as well, there's this book which is called The Phoenix Project, which is a novel and actually it's a story that goes into all these ideas about manual configuration. It's a big tale about how just using manual configuration and not doing things with the infrastructure as code can be a problem over the long term. But yeah, grab that if you want to understand a bit more about some of the pitfalls about manual configuration for infrastructure as code. So another big topic when it comes to infrastructure as code is the tooling that we use to create this. So a couple of the big players in this market are CloudFormation, for instance, which is an AWS specific tool. Now we were using AWS SAM in the last uh, in the last video, and AWS SAM is a wrapper around CloudFormation. I think I mentioned that as well, uh, which means that you use CloudFormation under the hood. Now AWS SAM does a lot more than just infrastructure as code stuff. Uh, it does a lot of other stuff, and we'll go into that on a, on another day. But you've got other things like, for instance, Terraform, which is an open source tool, which is not specific to a given cloud provider. So using Terraform, you can provision stuff in Azure, in GCP, in AWS, and actually in a whole bunch of other places as well. And you've got other stuff like Pulumi, which is very similar to Terraform, just as it's a different language. Uh, it's a little bit less uh, popular as Terraform is, but just another player in the market. And there's there's quite a few of these, there's more tools, but those are some of the, the main ones that you might want to know about. Which sort of tool makes sense for you and which one should you be learning? So as part of the Cloud Resume Challenge, it's totally fine if you're using something like AWS SAM or using CloudFormation. However, as I said, both of those tools are actually very AWS specific, so you might want to consider your different options and uh, which one probably makes sense for you in your scenario. I was going to say if you're stuck and you want a sort of a recommendation for one to choose, I would highly recommend that you check out Terraform. Uh, there's a very specific reason for this, and that's because 
it is probably the biggest tool out there that also works across clouds. So as we said before, Terraform is going to work AWS, GCP, Azure. So if you're not entirely sure about which of those cloud platforms you're interested in, Terraform is just like a great choice because it's going to sit in the middle. And also if you want to then go from Terraform to learning a different tool like CloudFormation, there's a lot of the same concepts, same ideas that are going to apply to something like CloudFormation as they do to Terraform. And I've actually got another book as well that I wanted to recommend, which is this one, which is Terraform Up and Running. Uh, it goes into a lot of stuff about infrastructure as code as well as Terraform itself. And it's going to take you through like start to finish all the different pieces about Terraform. So just wanted to mention that if you are in the market looking for an infrastructure as code tool, maybe you're just not quite sure which one to invest your time in. Uh, I basically can highly recommend Terraform, but it's totally okay for the Cloud Resume Challenge if you're doing that in CloudFormation or in AWS SAM, as I will be throughout this series. That's every other thing I want to run through about infrastructure as code. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff on the website talking about this. The whole topic of infrastructure as code is quite a big one. I don't think it's a particularly complicated topic, but there's lots of nuances, and I'm sure as you start to dig in, you'll start to generate your own questions. But yeah, if you head over to the website, I'll actually leave some links as well below in the description. Basically, stuff about infrastructure as code, stuff about Terraform, best practices and things like that that you can check out. But yeah, okay, and that's pretty much it. So I'll see you in the next video.